All right. Welcome to the first official video of uh, Snore on a Modding tutorial. Um, in this video, we're going to go through the beginning stages of modding. So I've got a model over here, which let me just grab. Um, yeah, where are you? Nissan. All right. So I've got a 1990 Nissan Patrol Y60 model. Um, I'm going to show you how to import it into Blender, how to get your scene set up, and how to start working with it to um, uh, get it prepared for Snow Runner. So the first thing you want to do once you open up Blender is to... This is Blender 2.9, I believe. Um, the first thing you want to do is get rid of the default light camera and shape. And just select everything, or press A on the keyboard and hit Delete. Uh, we're going to set up our scene. So for Snow Runner, we use uh, the, the unit of measurement is in centimeters. So you want to go over on the left side over here, on the right side, sorry, um, and hit that little icon and drop down on units. And where it says unit scale, you want to put that to 0 0.01. And then for length, you want to put that to centimeters. So basically what that means is every one centimeter in, in Blender, in your scene, equates to one meter in Snow Runner. So you want to have that set up first before you do anything. The next thing you want to do now is bring up some well, friendly menus on the screen that you're going to use whilst you're modding. So on the keyboard, you want to press N, and I'll bring up your tool list on the, on the top right. Uh, you're going to use that to navigate your mesh to look at your orientation and so on, and measurements. So you want to have that up there. Another thing you want to bring, do not be, bring up is your statistics. So for that, right where you see that little overlays, you want to click on that. And down on the scale, you want to click the box that says statistics and bring it up. And what happens is over on the left side, it's going to show you how many vertices, edges, faces, or triangles are in the scene or on the mesh that you're working with. That's important because Blender, sorry, Snow Runner, each mesh has a limit of 64,000 of either one of those vertices, edges, or faces. So you want to keep track of that. Um, so now I've got my scene set up. I'm just going to uh, save my scene. So the folder I'm working out of, I'm just going to create a save file and save it before I import my model. So uh, where are you, Nissan? Down here. So I'm just going to call it uh, Nissan uh, Y60. Enter and save that. So we're ready. So now I've already gone ahead and downloaded my model. It's in FBX format. So I'm going to go to File, Import. Now you've got a few options here. Most models are FBX, but you do occasionally get them in object file or waveform, which is OBJ. So you're going to select FBX because that's the format we've got. And in my folder, I've got the model here. So I'm just going to double click on that. All right, so our model is loaded in onto the screen. It's quite big. That's why it looks weird like that. Uh, the first thing you want to do is press N on the keyboard. Now, what that does is orient the screen according to the Y, the, the X axis. In Snow Runner, you want to have your model along the X axis, the front end facing the positive side and the rear facing the negative side. So that's the first thing I do. Another thing I'm going to do right now, I'm looking at, if I click on a mesh, you could see that little dot appear here, click on another mesh, a dot appear somewhere else. That's the, um, the, the origin of the mesh. So you want to press A to select all and go over to the top left where it says object mode, an object, you click on that and you set your origin to the 3D cursor. So that means everything in the scene is set to this point. And now we're just gonna, we, we need to scale the model. We need to get the model to the right size. Uh, it fits perfectly into Snow Runner. So for that, we're gonna use the internet. So I'm gonna share my screen with a Google page. And I'm gonna type in Nissan, it's a Nissan Patrol uh, Y60 dimensions. <coughs> Nice, it's very convenient for us. It shows up up here. Sometimes you have to click on links and open up wiki and try to find images. Some other times you just get that whole thing listed out for you right there. Um, okay, so we it's been conveniently placed 
in centimeters and inches. Obviously, we need meters. We're working in meters. Well, centimeters, but meters. You, uh, you do the conversion. All right. To get the dimension um, that we need, you want to create a, a shape or a cube or a box, right? So for that, in Blender, I'm going to type Shift and A, and that menu is Add. I'm going to select a cube. Now, you can also go to um, over here in the corner and hit Add Mesh, but Shift and A works faster. I'm going to find the cube over here on the right panel and select, have the cube selected and go into Items on your menu that you opened, and you could see the dimensions of your cube. So in that little box that says dimensions, you want to put the dimensions that we find onto, um, f from Google over here. So on the x-axis, which is the length, because remember, so 4.84. All right. I also, I could, while well, someday, let me make sure I've got the widths right. The long wheelbase width is 1.93. So 1.93. And the height is 1.81, 1 1.81, yeah, 1.81, 1 1.81, which is close to what we had. Okay, so this this is very, very important, right? You need to get this right because a lot of the code relies on coordinate points. And if something is off and you go back and change later down, you're going to give yourself a hell of a lot of work in the code. So get the dimensions right before moving on. So you could see, <clears throat> pardon me, you could see our square, our little shape down here. That's, that's that our vehicle needs to fit in that image, that box down here. And it's all the way up here. So a good way of trying to make sure you select everything in the scene except the box um, is to press Control. So you select the box and then you press Control I, which inverts the selection and it selects everything else. And then you hit, you press S and then you just bring it in. So S is a scale, you just bring it in. And then you keep zooming in, and bring it in. Okay, I'm gonna leave it about here. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it about here, about here. Okay, I'm gonna move my box now. I wanna put my my box at the level of um, the X line, like I wanted to sit on it. The way I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into edit mode on the box. I'm gonna go into um, X-ray mode, which is Alt and Z on the keyboard, I could click this up here, a toggle x-ray. And I'm gonna just grab the lower layer of the box by holding on the mouse and dragging across. And I'm gonna press Shift and S, and I'm gonna say cursor to selected. So that means the cursor is gonna go in the middle of the lower part of the image. Um, I'm gonna come out of edit mode, and with the box selected and the cursor down here, I'm gonna go into object, set origin to 3D cursor. So I'm moving the origin of the box to the 3D cursor. So now the origin is down here. Now I'm going to press Alt and G. And what that did, it moved the origin with the box to the 000, zero, zero coordinate on the, on the, in the scene, which is perfectly where we want it. I'm going to bring the 3D cursor back into the center by pressing Shift and C. Okay, and save that. All right, so now we, I'm going to move the um, box along the x-axis. So I'm just going to click on the box, go to edit mode, press A for all. I'm going to press G and X, and I'm just going to move the mouse that way, slowly. And I'm going to leave it here. I think the measurement would be between bumper to bumper. So I'm going to put it about yeah. here. Yeah. I I nah, I don't want to have the spare wheel in there. Now with the box selected, control I to invert the selection and now I'm going to press S and I'm just going to scale this up. I'm also going to bring it down. So press G and Z and I'm going to zoom in G and Z just to make it sit there. I'm always dubious about vehicle heights because it all depends on the way the model was created. So don't really look at the vehicle height as gospel. Rather take the length because the person who designed it could have put bigger wheels on it and then it would be higher. So the vehicle length is the most important thing. So I'm going to press S and just bring it up till the bumper. Hang on about here, I reckon. So it needs to go a little bit to the back. So I'm going to press G, X to the back. 
and then I'm going to check the back by zooming out and zooming back in. So I need to go a little bigger. So I'm going to press S. I'm going to hold Shift so now the scale is quite slow. And I'm going to bring it out a bit. And it's just gone out the box here. And it's just gone out the box here. If it's bumper to bumper, we are correct. If it's not bumper to bumper, if it's like from the front of the vehicle, the radiator to the back of the lights, then we're off. But it's hardly noticeable in SnowRunner. So what I've just done now is uh, I've pressed three on the keyboard to switch to the front orientation view to look at what the width looks like. That's another thing I go by, right? If the width is good and the length is good, I'm happy. Two out of three, I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, just to give you an idea of the orientation shortcuts, seven is for upper view. Um, shift and seven is for under view. One is from looking at it on the right. Shift and one is looking at it from the left. Three is from the front. Shift and three is from the back. Um, also, if you're lost in the scene and you want to zoom in on a particular item, you click on it and you press the dot on your um, number pad or the full stop, the dot or whatever. This also works if you're not looking at the mesh and you just find something on the right panel, you click on it and you press dots and it should bring it in. You have to bring the mouse back into the scene. Try that again. Bring it off the scene. Click on, mm, I don't know. Can over, bring the mouse back and press dot. You should find it. That's a good way of if you're lost, you can bring the model back. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, all the other numbers in the number pad works in with different orientations. So obviously one is on the side, but two will give you that middle view between one and three. Uh, it will give you that view. So one is the side, three is the front, two will give you the front and the side at the same time. And same for all the other numbers. But yeah, they're a quick way of moving around the vehicle. All right. Um, okay, so I'm using the middle mouse button to click and navigate orbit my, my um, model. I'm holding shift and I'm dragging the middle mouse button to move it, pan it about, and I'm ro rolling it in and out to zoom. So you, those are basic functions. You should be familiar with them. All right. So now we've got the... the um, the vehicle properly scaled. I trust the scale because it is from uh, the website. It looks credible. I'm happy. So I'm going to move forward now. Um, I'm going to press Alt and H to bring back any hidden items. So I'm going to show you how to hide items and to unhide items. Um, right now we're in extra mode. I'm going to press um, Alt and Z. Come on to extra mode. I'm going to click on the cube and delete it. Or the shape. I'm going to delete it. And now we're looking at our model. It looks really, really good. I'm going to save, always save, um, it's important, always save. Now the next step, we've set a blender, we've set the scene up, um, we've scaled our vehicle, um, we're now ready to start processing the truck for uh, SnowRunner. So this is the end of the first video.